Hi guys, this is the Dev Lounge and welcome to another tutorial. First off, I'd like to say I'm sorry that I haven't released many videos recently. Currently waiting for new internet as I've moved into a new flat while I'm at my time at university. But anyway, let's continue on. This tutorial today is on Twitter Bootstrap, uh, type ahead plugin. We're going to look at how we connect to a remote data source and link our data to the type ahead plugin using Twitter Bootstrap's new way of doing this. Twitter or well, Bootstrap actually incorporated this into the plugin themselves without having to modify any code, which is 10 times better than the previous version. So without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to go over to Twitter Bootstrap and we're going to download the Bootstrap using this big button here. So hit that one. Wait for that to download. I'm going to bring up my project folder. So I've created a little folder in my HD docs here called Type Ahead. I'm going to open up the Bootstrap folder that I just downloaded. I'm going to copy the CSS, JS, and the image files into this folder. I'm going to get rid of this old Bootstrap folder. I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to drag this folder into my text editor, so Coda 2. And we're going to start off by creating two files. So I'm going to create an index.html. And I'm also going to create a source.php. So we're going to open up our index.html. I'm going to set up the basic HTML5. This is already preset. You can pause the video now and stop it, but I'm just going to give it a quick title. Twitter bootstrap type ahead. I'm going to import the CSS. I'm actually going to import the responsive CSS as well because they're not one file and the JavaScript and then we're going to just start off by creating a div with the class of well and inside here we're going to have an input so a type of text it's going to have a class equal to span sorry span 3 we're going to give it an ID of type ahead and we're going to give it the data dash provide of type ahead as well. So all being well, if you open up your browser and refresh the page, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So I've created a table called type ahead and it's just got ID and name. So I've got 10, 10 names of things in here that we're going to be search searching for. So let's first set up the jQuery to actually connect our type ahead plugin to the source. So we're going to do a self-invoking function and then we're going to call jQuery on our input field. So using the ID of type ahead, I'm going to select that field and use the type ahead plugin. And we're going to pass it some objects. So the major thing that we're going to pass it is the source. And now J, uh, Bootstrap have actually incorporated the source to allow for functions. So we can do a function. And this function takes two parameters, one being the query and one being the process. Okay, now the query is the query or the text that you actually write in the field and the process is the process of getting the query and selecting and highlighting the correct words and letters. So within this source we're going to do our $.ajax uh, method and we're going to do the URL of source.php. It's going to be a type post. The data is going to be query is equal to, and outside the single quote, we're going to add the query relating to whatever you use here. I use query. The data type is JSON. Async is true. And then we have a success, which is a function, and the data. So for now, we're just going to console.log the data when we get it back. And that's everything you need to do in our HTML file. So if we now go over to our source.php, I'm just going to do a little bit of introspection to check whether we actually 
have been posted. So if is set post query. So we're just checking if we've been posted the query. And first off, we're going to connect to our database. Then we're going to retrieve the query. Then we're going to search the database for all similar items. And then we're going to return the JSON array. So first off, let's connect to the database. So MySQL connect, and then mine's just localhost root and root. Yours may be different, I don't know. And MySQL select database, and mine's just called bootstrap. <clears throat> so now we need to retrieve the query. So I'm going to do dollar $query is equal to dollar underscore post and the name query. This will be exactly the same as it was up here. Now we're going to search the database. So I'm going to create a variable called SUL is equal to MySQL query. And then double quotes, select all from my table, which is called type ahead, where the name, so the field the name is like, and then in single quotes, and then 2% within the single quotes, and then curly braces within the percent sign again, and then our variable query, and then a semicolon at the end. We're going to make an, uh, a variable that is our array and set it as an array. So this array variable here is going to take the array of the names we get back from this SQL query here. So now we're going to loop over the results. So dollar row is equal to MySQL fetch associative array SQL. So we put uh, whatever name you use here inside here. And then we take our array and then square brackets to signify that it's a new item in the array. And this is equal to row and then name. Name, because that's what the field is called in my database. And then from here, we simply just echo JSON encode and then our array. So now if we console.log our data, so I'm going to refresh the page and I'm going to inspect the elements and I'm going to type U so we get YouTube, Yahoo, Sky and jQuery back because they all have a Y in them somewhere. So now the next task is to actually, instead of console.logging this, is actually to get type ahead to process this. It's very simple. We use process, then within parentheses, the data and semicolon. We'll refresh the page again. And this time when I type YouTube, we get our list. Then we select them. YouTube becomes the source or the value in that text field. So then we can also do things like min length this time. Previously, you couldn't do this. This wouldn't work. But now if I change this to two, when we type Y this time, nothing happens. But as soon as we type the O, we get our results. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Dev Lounge. Like us on Facebook, again, forward slash The Dev Lounge. And be sure to tell everyone. And yeah, I should be making a lot more videos now. As soon as I get the internet, we'll get lots of things uploaded. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you.